Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, Pete and Teresa have asked me to introduce the presentation this morning. Um, as you know, we are on year three of our GIS project, scheduled to terminate on February of 2012. Um, essentially, uh, the when Pete came to me uh, for uh, information about the project, uh, he advised me that he was working on this paper to present at Oxford and uh, wanted to see ex exactly what we were doing, how far we'd come, and could provide him with some information about the, sp the scope and the purpose of the project. So I was quite happy to help both Pete and Teresa, as, as you might imagine, uh, and looked forward to the results of the presentation, the, the paper that they did. Essentially, the paper deals with the process involved in a community college such as ours and what what it is entailed by achieving a, a grant of this type of significance, uh, the issues, the concerns, and then the possible outcomes of that. So it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Mora, Dr. DeFranco. All right, thank you. I'll take this auto and can you hand that other piece over because I think I need to speak kind of close to this. Okay. Well, thanks all for coming today. Yeah, I uh, just w thought we would go through um, uh, a brief presentation and then some Q&A. Essentially, you should have three handouts uh, that were over on the table. The first one is the agenda for today. And it's really pretty simple. It's four parts. Uh, I'll talk about where Atlantic Cape is with respect to our overall um, commitment to STEM-based disciplines. Uh, Teresa will talk about where the Margate School District is, and we'll figure out through this how we're connected. Um, and through this project. Uh, then we'll talk a little about the actual case study we did, which was part of the grant, the GIS grant we have. And Teresa will talk about the special role her uh, district played as one of our uh, external collaborating partners. With respect to the big picture, this is teaching to the choir for sure, but uh, you know that um, uh, community colleges, generally when you look at our, mi our respective missions, we have, uh, I apply the 80-20 rule pretty frequently when I speak privately into groups. 80% uh, of, our, of our curricula and our um, missions are pretty much alike, pretty much alike among the 1200 community colleges. It's that 20% that's unique. And the metaphor I use, and uh, you've heard me use it many times, is uh, for that 20% of the curriculum, you really take a mirror and hold it up to your community. And whatever the post-secondary needs, credit, academic or non-credit, that is needed in that area, that's what you provide. So every, to some extent, every, there's no two community colleges that are exactly alike. We all know that. Uh, so uh, for our area, we know what's about our area, our two counties, and we also know that one of the areas that's growing is in the area of uh, aerospace technology and aviation technology around the expansion of the tech center. We've moved some uh, d d discipline based resources around that. Uh, I'm not, I won't talk to, about many of those. We'll talk about one of those today, which is our GIS program. That's part of that movement toward uh, responsiveness there. Uh, I would add to that uh, our new uh, commitment to our new science technology building, which is what will house uh, a lot of this uh, delivery of these kinds of programs. And um, just say, I don't know if there's any more points I want to make on this. Um, uh, certainly GIS Day is a, is a day to do this, and so we thought we'd uh, see if we could have any interest in this presentation from the, from our to our internal group. Uh, certainly our science and technology uh, also caters to our pre-existing groups, our CIS programs and our nursing programs and other science-based programs. We, we certainly will uh, always support those. Uh, Teresa, you want to talk about the district and where you are? Sure. I, I'm going to give the perspective of just looking at things from a national perspective. Where did Margate fit into that from a national perspective? And then we'll, as, can yeah. you hear me? Or And that's yeah. going to be recorded okay. over there. Okay. That's that old teacher. You know, mm -hmm. as teachers, we never lose that voice. Mm -hmm. All right, one of the things that I wanted to, if you haven't already picked up a copy, would be important is the summary. And it's that was in, a in summary. Yeah. It, it's a handout, it's mm -hmm. in yellow. I want to highlight a couple important things in this. If you want to uh, obtain a, co a full copy, uh, it's about, the report is about that large on there. And some of the key highlights that came out of that report that you have in front of you is that they say the success of the United States in the 21st century, its welfare, its wealth is going to depend on the skills of the population. And STEM, including GIS, 
is going to play a real leading role on whether we stay a, nation, a lead and have a lead as a nation. So think of the importance of that. It's 21st century skill and STEM having a major importance of where we're going into the 21st century. That's saying that the skills that we have, that we're going to be needing scientists, that we're going to be needing technologists, engineers in that field, we're going to need people that are going to be able to cut, create new ideas, new products, and new industries that are needed for the 21st century. So with that said, I did a lot of homework to say, all right, as a leader in Margate, where do I need to take a K through eight, and where does the K through 12 need to go? So by the time they get to higher ed, they're not hearing it for the first time. They're not thinking maybe I want to go into a science or I think I like math because we know a lot of our kids take math and I'm saying our kids at the college take math last. You know, and that's from my history of being here as a dean. I know that they take it. They're afraid of math. And yet if we need it as an occupation and we're saying this is a workforce that we need to stay in the lead as a country what do we need to do starting in kindergarten? So the first thing that I did, first of all, I believe in it very strong. Being a former, many, many moons ago, before I was a dean here at the college, I was a science teacher. Uh, taught sixth grade science. I believe very much in the technology and, and had a major role with technology here at the college. One of the things that we did is develop the five-year plan because if it's not in the vision of where you want to go, that it doesn't exist and, and I know that you did a whole revision of your strategic plan at the college. We didn't have a strategic plan at Margate. So that was the first thing we did. We developed a five-year plan and said where do we want to go over the next five years and knowing something like this. This is something that the country needs to be going and there's an endless amount of papers. I know Otto when you did the grant for GIS I looked at and read the stacks and stacks of articles that are out there on GIS, the importance of that, and technology. So I infused a lot of where we needed to go as a K through 8 to our teachers. Looked at where do we need to go with the curriculum. And we developed a five-year plan that was linked to 21st century skills. And that was the first key piece there. And one of the parts that we did is that, you know, with anything you need money, you need dollars. And we also knew that a lot of the, what they found with the research, a lot of the women, Hispanics, African American, Native Americans, they weren't going to the STEM. What did we need to do as a K through 8 to start kids getting interested at the kindergarten level, not being afraid to really enjoy that? So one of the things that I did is I hooked up with um, Stevens Institute for Technology. And I contacted Stevens and said, We're very, you're a leader with STEM. How can we join with you and really provide, because teacher training, and you will see that as one of the recommendations, is very much needed. Teacher training so teachers are comfortable with STEM. How do you integrate that so if you're teaching a language arts or you're teaching a science course that it can be infused and integrated in the disciplines so it's not just seen as separate entities. I'm going to a math class or a computer class, but we as a K through 8 needed to say how can that all be embedded? So what we did is we hooked up with Stevens and we received a National Science Foundation grant. Big money. And we had Stevens behind us, and we were the only school in South Jersey to receive that grant with Stevens. All the rest of the schools were from North Jersey.